Hello, quilters. Happy Wednesday night. Happy rainy, dreary, I really want to nap Wednesday night. But alas, I'm staying awake until it's time to go to sleep. And then I'll stay awake even longer. Any other night out quilters? So tonight, um, we are talking about machine quilting and binding your quilts. Now, I know some quilters think that binding quilts is optional. It's not. It's also not a punishment. Um, I also know some quilters like to bind their quilts, which is kind of weird for me. It's not my favorite part of quilting, but now it's become a joy. Um, so leave me a chat to let me know that the comments are working because they don't always work. Um, and then I end up talking to myself. I've been quilting most of the day and I'm working, uh, I'm almost finished with a quilt for next week's As the Bobbin Turns. Let me see what's going on with the chat. Nothing. Let me see what's going on here. I'm just looking on my phone. There are comments. Okay, they're just not working on mine. See what's going on with the chat. Oh, let's turn the volume off on that, Deb, shall we? There are comments. Okay, they're just not working on mine. No volume. Stop. On. Okay, hello, everyone. We got night owls. Yeah, I'm a night owl. Um, sorry, the comments aren't working on my software. Just because, you know, life does that. Uh, so, and I see names now and I feel like romper room. I see Janet and Sandal and Michelle. Thank you, Elizabeth, which bind Elizabeth, you said you like my binding technique. Now in the class, I teach several and I'll talk about them. Um, let's see, Amelia. Good morning, Amelia. I hope you're having a nice cup of tea for me. I'm going to have one as soon as we're done here. Um, I was going to make a nice cup of tea to have with you while I was talking to you, but then I was quilting and I'm working on a feathered border and I did all one side of a border and I said, well, I'll work on the other side um, and I'll have plenty of time to make tea afterward. And then it was two minutes before, so that didn't work. Let's see trying to see if the chat is working. Chat is still not working. Okay, I'll stay on my phone. Is that true? So, hello. Sewing to back, folding to front, and machine stitching. You got it. Um, that's exactly what I do on most of my quilts, as in all of my quilts. But I do, I know many other kinds. I used to hand bind all my quilts. Um, and I used to have, oh, I still have the chair in my living room uh, of a rocker, rocker chair that was folded with all the quilts waiting for me to hand bind it because I spent more time binding my quilts. It took me longer to bind them than it took me to quilt them because I'm a pretty quick, pretty quick quilter. You might have noticed I get stuff done pretty quickly. Um, no tea yet, Amelia. Mm. Um, I had some great tea um, when I was at AQ. Um, the AQC, Australasian Quilt Convention. And for all of the folks who don't live in Australia, this is the fanciest quilt show I've ever taught at in my life. It is in a beautiful old building, old for Australia, um, which, you know, is what, 1800s, it's a trade center. And the building is shaped like a, like a cross and it has two stories with arched roof and it's beautiful. It kind of looks like our Capitol building in the States, <clears throat> just beautiful architecture and it's entirely empty and then they build walls and doors for classrooms on the second floor um and there's hall um there's tea service throughout the day they have um wait staff there are um massages for the delegates if you sign up for the quilt show and to be a student you're called a delegate to the australasian quilt convention mm. it is the fanciest quilt show i've ever taught at and it's one you should go to um, the downside is it's really far away from the United States, like really far. But I think I've taught there three or four times. It's fabulous. Um, could not recommend it enough. And there is, they served me a tea there that was a floral Earl Grey. And I almost asked a friend to smuggle me some to the States. I can't remember the brand of it yet, but there was a floral Earl Grey that was just delightful there. Um, and my, it's in Melbourne, 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 
And my husband came with me, um, at least I think the first time I came and we fell in love with it. Um, that's my favorite place. I, I love, I love Melbourne and um, going to the Queen, Queen somebody's market. Um, and it's a beautiful fresh air market where I go and pick up groceries for the week. T2, it might be T2, um, but uh, folks who don't travel to Australia don't know that the food there is very expensive. Like if you go to a restaurant and order a food, it costs about twice as much as it costs in the States. But if you go to the grocery store, it doesn't. And their market is an open air market, Queen Victoria market. I knew it wasn't Elizabeth. Thank you. The Queen Victoria market is amazing. We get um, rashers of bacon and um, really inexpensive seafood and produce. And because the uh, hotel that they book for me when I teach over there has a kitchen in it. So I just cook the whole time and it's just so delicious. And it's the way I eat at home too. Um, except your bacon is very different. Um, still yummy, but very different. And your prawns and your fish, it's amazing. So yeah, I kind of miss Australia. I can't come back, but mm, I have very fond memories of the people, the place, the tea, the food. It was delicious. Everything about it was wonderful, except the distance. It's a little far away. Um, so have a floral Earl Grey for me. So I'm uh, I'm finishing quilting up a border, um, listening to uh, listening to a book that is not the Gulag Archipelago. Today is just rainy. I want to take a nap day. I needed something a little more exciting. Not that that wasn't exciting, but it was depressing. So uh, listening to just another fantasy novel. But once I finish this quilt, uh, I will immediately. Um, I will immediately bind it. My binding is already done. It's sitting right there. I can see it. And as soon as the quilt's done, it gets trimmed, bound, and done. Uh, somebody in one of my talks last week said they work on one quilt at a time. I don't. Never have. And I have a lot of UFOs. I tend to start things and put them away. And I'm a beginner quilter. I begin quilts and put them away. But once I do get a quilt out and start machine quilting it, the machine quilting is not done until the quilt is bound. So I don't have a pile of unbound quilts. They're bound instantly. Um, and that happened because I started machine binding my quilts. So I can machine bind it from the front, you know, whenever I was hand sewing them, I would machine bind it to the front, fold it over and hand bind it, which would take um, eight to 4,000 business days uh, just to get that done. But I'll have the, I can bind a quilt in minimal time. I have some tables to support me, you know, to hold the quilt up while I'm quilting and I just get it done very quickly. So the binding is a non-issue now, it, it, I barely notice. Um, let's see, I'm going to share my screen. Oh, I do work on more than one quilt at a time, which I mentioned. So I always have, um, a table, just a little, a little cart that has my 16 piles for my color blocks. So I have all the two and a half inch squares and those are my leaders and enders for whatever I'm doing. And usually later at night, I may not want a machine quilt because my, um, it's hard for me to see at night and I, the filming lights make me hot and I'm, I'm at that age and on medication, I'm just hot. So, um, I might piece at night cause it's easier for me to see on that machine than it is to see down under my quilting machine, uh, on my home machine. So, you know, I may piece another quilt. And so I may have a couple quilt tops in, in process. I'm going to base, I have a quilt sitting over on my pressing station waiting to baste. I've got one half pieced over there. I've got my leaders and enders. But the second that quilt is ready to be machine quilted, it's quilted and bound and done. So that's one less stopping place I have, which is nice. Let's see, Amelia, you said your main meals in Australia are 22 to $45 currently. For folks in the States, that's an Applebee's. That's, that's not fine dining. You know, we might get the $14.99 app, you know, $14.99 meal at um, Olive Garden Applebee's in Australia, you're spending twice as much. Um, and it's, it's just life is different. Um, and that's just the way it is. Um, but yeah, Queen Victoria Market, love it. So I'm going to show you the binding class because um, 
I want to go over it. I was I was at a quilt show where a lot of the teachers, they had a teacher exhibit of all the teacher's quilts hanging on the walls. And, um, you know, in the not in the show, but on the walls. And there were other teacher's quilts that were hanging. And my quilts hang flat and square and straight when I want them to. When I don't care, I don't care. Um, I give a lot of quilts away. And if one side is a quarter inch longer than the other, I'm not that upset about it. Um, but one of the first, I, um, I first found out how important binding was whenever I was commissioned to make a quilt for our local hospital. Um, if you've heard of Vassar Girls College, um, a famous college on the East Coast of the United States, it's co-ed now, um, but I live near there. And that Vassar family is also, um, that was our hospital, Vassar Hospital. So Vassar Hospital commissioned uh, me to make a quilt for the entrance to the new maternity wing. 25 years ago, thereabouts. And uh, if you know anything about hospitals and health and safety regulations, I was like, can you really hang a quilt on the wall of a hospital? And they said, sure. But isn't that in violation of like fire code, health and safety code? Doesn't it get germs, stuff like that? They're like, not a problem. We're going to build a plexiglass, a plexiglass box one quarter inch larger than your quilt all the way around. And I got a serious eye twitch because have you ever ha worried that your quilt might not hang straight and want a straight edge hanging right next to it to highlight that? Um, I definitely took longer to bind that quilt than I took to piece it or quilt it. Um, and it's still hanging there. Um, I haven't been there since before the pandemic. I haven't gone to visit a newborn, but it is there. Um, and I was in that hospital, but I wasn't um, this winter when I was um, when I was hospitalized, but I was not obviously in the maternity wing. Um, what was really fun about that visit, it was the first time I was at the at any emergency center where they didn't ask me if there was a chance I might be with child. And I always laughed at that every time I go and they ask if there's a chance because I'm like, no, I'm old. And now they look at me and they go, she's old. We're not asking her. I'm like, why aren't you asking me? So anyway, I didn't see my quilt, but it's still there. Then whenever I am traveling as a teacher, my quilts are hanging and they're hanging with other teachers. My quilt was hanging like this outside my classroom door. And the teacher's quilt next to me was hanging like this. And students kept coming into my classroom saying, your class, your quilt is so straight. I'm like, I know. They're like, but your binding is perfect. Yep. Um, but the other ones are wavy. Yep. Um, so the important thing that I want to tell you about binding a quilt is let's take it back to the borders. Whenever you're putting borders on a quilt, we all know that you just cut a really long border, slap it on, stretch your quilt, and sew the border to it. Is that right? No, that's probably a bad idea. Because what will happen if you slap and stretch and sew? Your quilt is this big, but your quilt border is going to stretch it and it's going to be really wavy, right? Most of us know not to do that. And what do you do instead? You measure and you pin it. You measure your border and you pin it to it so that it doesn't have a very wavy border. Now, let's think about what we do with our bindings. We make a really long binding. We slap it on the border. We stretch it and we sew it. And then our border gets wavy, um, be, uh, the binding gets wavy. And it looks, uh, because we've actually stretched that quilt out a little bit and put more binding on the quilt than the quilt needs. So there's extra binding and that's what makes it stand out, wavy. It's like a the edging on crinoline skirts. Um, I used to do bridal. So that's that's how we get to stand out anyway. So I did a quilt for someone and they said, this quilt is hanging on the wall. It's not hanging straight. And I'm really upset with this quilt. And I said, the quilt was straight when it left my house. I didn't bind their quilt. Somebody else bound their quilt. And after a couple of years, they took the quilt down. And I said, it's not the quilting. The quilt is square. I promise. The quilt is square. It was square when it left my house. It was the binding. Um, they, uh, I went away with this quilter and, you know, we were traveling to a quilt show and they unpicked the binding 
put the binding back on and they ended up with like this much extra binding because whoever had bound their quilt had done that and they said oh by the way your quilt wasn't square it was a quarter inch larger on one side like i'll own that so it really can make a difference if you have problems with your quilt bindings that that's the free one you know that i again i'm not real big on i'm not telling you things unless you buy the class if you um are binding your quilts when you're binding your quilts and then being straight really matters measure your edge measure your binding pin it on so that you don't stretch it it takes a couple extra minutes but your quilt doesn't do this inside of a plexiglass box for all the world to see for 25 years at a hospital does that kind of make sense so let's see other things that's the basics of binding let me go over Where is it? Where is it? Oh, actually what I have open here is a few things like this quilt here, I just bound um, and mailed off this morning. This is a graduation quilt for a family member uh, going to university. And it's a very tall quilt. It's a dorm quilt because uh, university beds are typically longer. That's why we have to buy those extra long sheets when our kids go to college. Um, so, I did not measure the binding on here. Um, I kind of just slapped it on, but I know how hard to push it. This little bit of wiggle down here is not really a wiggle. It's just a function of the way it's hanging. Um, but you can see it's pretty straight here. If it mattered more, like this is going to get drugged through the mud and, you know, be destroyed by the end of four years of college. That one's fine. Um, this was machine quilted with um, Wonderfill confetti in tan all the way through including the black, the gold, the white, and the red, and the border. And it was um, all quilted with a stencil of swirls and a stencil of ribbon candy. So you can see, here's the stencil. I went in, I went around, 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 got to the center and just pulled a straight line down to the next one. I'm never sure if you can see my cursor moving on the screen, but um, you can follow that line. And the board, uh, uh, this border here was stitched uh, with a ribbon candy stencil. And this was stitched with that same stencil here, except I had it run all the way around the quilt. So it, it matched in the corners. Ah. So that is up on um, color blocks. The pattern is there, it's a dorm quilt. Color blocks, bonus, square, Dorm quilt, I think is the name of the pattern and the video on how to quilt it, that's there. Um, this is in As the Bobbin Turns this week. Uh, I am working on a spiral class and this is a scrap binding. So I used white fabric here. I, I have, when I'm done with my bindings, they're all the same width. I throw them in a drawer and then I pull them out by color and bind my quilts. So I pulled out all my pinks and bound this quilt this one got mailed off to my second cousin twice removed. It's my second cousin's grandbaby. Um, but I machine bound that one as well. I didn't measure this one, but it's close enough. If it's going in a show. If it's something that's going to be photographed, it will be, it, I will measure it. This one is not bound because it's just a sample of the technique. And then this quilt here, um, this is this month's color block, which is um, back to school, School of Fish. You can see the 16 patches here. So this is in color blocks 2023. Um, I made fish into a fish. Feels very meta. And I had so much fun quilting. And I am loving watching as this quilt has gone into the world. The people are going gaga over the quilting of it. And I beat myself up on the quilting of it because I, I was just mad at myself and the world. Oh, Angie, this quilt is so much fun. Thank you, dear. Um, I love it. I love it now. I hated it while I was making it, but I, I'm also in the throes of a back injury, um, a back problem. So I was in a lot of pain when I was quilting it, and I was just mean and grumpy and mad at myself. This one has uh, blue-green uh, fossil ferns in the background quilted with tutti um, lamb, which is cream, tan, and gray variegated. 
I kind of just tripped, fell down and lucked into some beautiful quilting here because this is the first quilt in a long time that people have gone so gaga over. And it's just really heartening to watch, especially while I'm nursing a back injury uh, and living in my wheelie chair. So thank you for all of your kind words. Um, trust me, I will be doing more of this type of quilting and exploring what what more that can look like because it was super duper fun and easy. I hope many of you have a chance to to try this type of quilting. This video is in Color Blocks 2023, Color Blocks Goes Wild, and the pattern is back to school. So the pattern is there. I've updated it. Uh, someone let me know that I never put in how to cut the setting triangles. I had to cut the big squares, but I didn't say how to cut them. So I've updated the pattern. If you've already downloaded the pattern, go download it again. It's been replaced on the class um, and just get a fresh copy. I've added in um, how to cut your side and corner triangles. Uh, I pulled out all of my blue bindings for this and did the same thing. There's a little upper close um, of the machine quilting. And, and when I was piecing this, I it was also while I wasn't feeling spectacular, uh, if this is all done on the bias and I had a little puckery here and there and the quilt lived through it. That's why I was beating myself up while I was quilting it, that um, it wasn't as flat as I wanted it to be, but overall the quilt is adorable and I'm in love. Oh, sorry, another old picture. So I'll finish with that. Let me stop sharing. Um, by the way, that is the cover of Vintage Quilts Made Modern from McCall's magazine a lot of years ago, back when I still had long hair. So let me come back and say hello. Hello. And let me go find... Um, so that's just what's new <laughs> at uh, what's new this week. And I wanted to uh, make a point to those I hadn't gotten to that uh, the pattern has been corrected. So let me find the quilt binding. Here we go. So here is the quilting essentials, how to bind a quilt. Learn basic binding techniques, variations, tip for success. Um, when I have the color blocks classes, those are free to enroll while I'm working on them. Um, but some of my classes are paid classes. This is a paid class. Uh, and you have access to it forever. So it's, it's not, you have to keep re-enrolling. Um, this here, we have got some bias binding. I'm sorry, curved edge binding. We have some bias binding here on the waves. 75 minutes of video instruction. I sit here with a calculator and figure it out. So going through this, um, when you go to debbiebrownquilts.com, click my online classes button, it will take you over to the course. And when you're not enrolled in the course, sorry, I think a little code came up on there. Um, you can start your class from this dashboard down here and it'll tell you that, that um, how to enroll. But how wide should I cut my binding strips? Uh, some people cut their bindings at two and a quarter. Most people cut them at two and a half. I personally am a two and three quarter type of quilter, but I talk about the math and why, and how you decide how wide to cut it. Preparing your binding, trimming your quilt for binding, because that's important. Sewing on the binding and turning the corners. Long video on that, um, because turning the corners, I like those nice square corners. Joining your ends when you're done and turn and hand stitch. That's the traditional way to... Um, the traditional way to make your quilt binding. After that, I go through binding the um, binding by machine with a straight stitch, and that is done like here. And this is done with a 12 weight um, metallic and rayon thread. I often bind my quilts with the same thread I quilted it with, which is thicker than my typical piecing thread because I like to just have that little extra bit. And I also talk about the, the length of the stitch and such. Wasn't that fun? I love that quote. I think that was left over from something, but I love pink and green. Uh, let's see. Um, adding decorative stitching. And that is if your machine has decorative stitches, I rarely do this, but um, because I bind on a straight stitch machine typically, but up here at the top, this was a blanket stitch that I used. And then this was um, a Fabulux thread that was really fun to use. 
So you can use your fun threads and fun stitches if you want to add to your binding that way. I talk about, uh, let's see, curvy bias bindings, um, which is cutting your strips, curving your corners, doing your serpentine edges. And that is, this is the serpentine edge here. And the way that um, polka dot went on the bias, it's really interesting to look at. That quilt's in my living room right now. Um, it's very interesting to look at just the way the dots go. And here I, I used a tool to curve the, the edges, but you can use um, any round tool. I'm really big at using dishes for stuff or um, like a little pencil bucket, things like that. And then the last thing is a faux flanged binding. Um, that is, let me come back and see you. Hi. So this the faux flange binding. And it, um, the, the flange is usually when here's your quilt and then you have a little piece of fabric and your binding goes over it and you just have that little thing sticking out of a contrast in color to make it really interesting. Well, a faux one is whenever you piece your binding two different colors this way and it's uneven. So when you fold it over, a little bit of this back color shows through and then you stitch on the line and have that extra little flange. Let me try to pull up a picture, a separate picture of that for you. Um, I have done this. Uh, I did this on a quilt. It actually got bled on like by fabric dye, not like blood blood. When I was in Ma um, St. Petersburg, they left uh, in Russia, they left my luggage on the tarmac and it got wet and I had a yellow flange on there. Um, and the red hand dyed fabric bled on a little bit. So I had to get that off. So let me find the binding class. See if I can get a picture. Binding, binding. I'm not seeing it. I apologize. I'm not seeing it, um, but that is how it works. Uh, and so I do cover all of that in there. The um, I don't have questions and answer um, capability inside the classes, and that's a tax issue. Certain countries tax classes differently, and I'm the person who writes the patterns and corrects the patterns and answers the emails and ships the stuff and makes the quilts and does the video and editing. I don't want to do international accounting. So um, if you have questions, ask them in the Facebook group and I will, um, or get them to me. I'm pretty easy to find Debbie Brown Quilts on all social media or click the contact me button on my website. Um, so ask questions through there. I just don't have the classes interactive. It's a tax thing. So those are um, the things I cover in the binding class. Um, let's see what class I can talk about next week. I will be here next week. I missed you last week. Sorry, I was laid up. Um, I have all of our content on calendars. It's like I'm organized or something. Uh, thread needles batting intention is next week's class we'll talk about. And um, then uh, I am putting out uh, the other classes I have that we'll talk about eventually are build your own edge to edge. Um, is the other one I have out. I'm also writing a class on machine quilted spirals using your walking foot. So I already have two lessons of the 10 done. And um, once that class is done, I'll let you know. Uh, if you subscribe to my As the Bob and Turns um, subscription uh, videos, I think it's um, $7.50 a month or something like that. Um, you can subscribe annually or monthly. Uh, you get the class, you get the lessons as they're written. And uh, then once it's done, I'll put it out to everyone. Other things I'll be talking about on Wednesday nights are how to set up your machine. Like I have um, tables set up next to my machine. I have a little cart next to me and what I keep into it um, for machine quilting. I thought people might want to see that. Um, the maintenance that I do, what I do every time I finish a quilt. Um, and then I have, uh, I'm going to be trial, I'm going to be away a bit in September. So I already have some video filmed and right before I go away, I will tell you what that is because there's patterns involved and, um, free patterns involved with some fun stuff going on. So I figured, um, 
this winter, last winter when I was sick, I didn't know that I was suddenly going to be gone for five months. And last week, I didn't know that I was suddenly going to skip. But if I know I'm going to be away, I'll try to film some surprises for you. So that's already done. Look forward to that. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry the chat didn't work. But um, it's good to always have the phone nearby. Thanks for visiting with me. Um, enjoy this lovely rainy weather if you're in the Northeast United States. Um, it's We're swimming around here. Um, but I hope quilting is getting you through whatever you need it to get you through. Uh, unless it's gardening season where you live and you do that. So take good care of yourselves. Have some fun quilting. Uh, go get lost in a good quilt, a good book, or whatever it takes um, to just take you to your perfect happy place. I will be back again on Tuesday afternoon, uh, letting you know what is new. I, I have, um, hopefully we'll have two more pieces of content out for you by then. Newsletter next Monday or Tuesday. So I should be on track to be uh, keeping up. And I already know what color blocks is going to be for September. Uh, think pink. So, happy quilting, everyone. I'll see you again next week.